So yeah, I had to give up the street life. When I first came out of jail, I came out worse. Man. Jail did not help me at all. Maybe because I was only in there for eight weeks. But I came out worse. All I wanted to do was piss man up. Man. It was either my first week out or my second week out. I had to end up fisting up one guy on my estate. This time I know license, you know. Fist him up, whatever. I see some community police officers running in the distance towards us. I had to end up cutting. Because if I got arrested, then I would have to serve out the rest of my sentence back in prison. And I remember one lady I met, she's like an internal probation officer. She said to me, with my mentality, you're going to be back. Six weeks I'll give you. Yeah, they're going to be back. Well, anyway, she was wrong about that. I had to change my mindset in order to not go back to prison, but it didn't happen straight away. So when I first came out, I was just on nonsense, man. Fisting up this man here, getting into a fight here. Yeah. I even got stabbed because I decided to punch someone in the face who I didn't directly have a problem with that individual, but he moves with them and I'm on anyone who moves with them. So you're one of them. Shortly after I came out of prison, I met my first girlfriend. Now let's just be clear. I want some 18 year old version or nothing like that. I mean, I'd bear girl behind her. But this was the first most official girlfriend I ever had. And we were tight. She used to come to my house all three, four times a week. She all lived in Ilford, which is on the outskirts of East London. She all used to travel an hour and a half to my house and an hour and a half back to her house. We were riding London transport and that. So yeah, we started bonding, getting tight, getting close. She was almost like my best friend. And there came a time where I thought to myself, you know what? Man, I have to stop all this street business. Yeah. I didn't want to be like her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Her ex-boyfriend was a road man as well. And he was in jail. And she used to have to go and visit him. And I think to myself, I don't want to be on a visit with my girlfriend. And I only get to see her between certain times of the day. On specific days. I don't want to be that guy on the end of the phone who can only talk for 10 minutes, yeah. sitting in my cell wondering who she's, yeah, if she's with her next man or whatever, isn't it? So I thought to myself, you know what? It has to stop now. Yeah. No more fishing up man over nothing. Yeah. No more going out to look for man. Yeah. Now, if I see man, a man try a thing on me, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm defending myself. Yeah, I ain't being no one's victim. Yeah. But no more going out looking for any trouble. No more doing anything to incriminate myself. Yeah, No money-making schemes, if you get what I mean. Yeah, All of that business has to stop. So I put all that nonsense behind me. When I first went to jail, I left obviously my brethren's out on the road. They're free. But whilst I was in jail, certain men done certain stuff they weren't supposed to, and they ended up in jail. I've come out, and certain men are still in. So I'm out on the road, I'm free, met my girlfriend, boom, 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 boom. Put that shit behind me, boom, 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 yeah. One of my virgins that was in, yeah, whilst I'm out, he's come out now, yeah. Now, when he's come out, He's still on that energy that I was on when I first came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, fisting man up on the hype team because when you're in jail and that, yeah, you, you, your mind is different. Yeah. Unless you're some Nico or whatever, and yeah, and you're a humble guy or whatever, and yeah, you're not like that. Then when you come out, you just go and be yeah. But if you was ever even a bit like that, when you're in jail. That gets heightened, yeah. You, you you become more aggressive and that you just you're more on it. I don't know, yeah. For me, when I came out, I was even worse, yeah. And when he came out, like yeah, he was on that hype thing or whatever. Isn't it? So I remember, um, I'm sure it was the first day that he came out, and was standing outside my house, and he's saying to me, "Hey, come and go ride on them, man. 
Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, but then man, they violate it, so... Brother, I'm not on that shit no more, fam. He's looking at me like... Huh? But I don't blame him, though. Because before him and I both went to prison, when I was on the street, yeah, I was a maniac. Straight up lunatic. Every other person I want... Ch -ch -ch -ch. That was before. Yeah. Nine, ten months have passed and I've changed. Obviously, he's thinking that I'm still going to be the same as when he last saw me. Nah, fam. But you know what? I'm glad I made that conscious decision to put it all behind me and move forward. Because I started to remember some of the conversations I used to have when I was in ISIS. Now, first of all, I went to Felton and then I went to ISIS. Yeah. Felton's a remand centre. Now, there's certain men who are sentenced and they're in Feltham, like myself. But more of the man them, most of the man them that are in Feltham, they're on remand, yeah? Uh, they're waiting trial or whatever, innit? When I moved to ISIS, I remember there was a youth, uh, same age as me, 18, he was like my best friend or whatever, innit, yeah? He was in the cell next to me, one Somalian youth. He was in jail for murder, isn't it? Now don't get it twisted. Bear man in jail, yeah, for murder. Bear man on the wing, yeah, ain't in jail for murder. But so I used to chill with this guy, innit? and he told me the story about what happened. How he, you know, he stabbed someone, and yeah, the 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 boy died or whatever. Innit? And when man are saying stuff to me like, yeah, um, I haven't even been given um, a, a release date, yeah. I've been sentenced to 20 years. Yeah, these times it's uh, 2011. I know I'm going to get released in like 2031. Like, that just sounds mad. Even now, like, it's 2020 right now. And to know, say, that my man ain't even going to come out until 2031. That, e that even right now, that seems like a, a lifetime away. Yeah, that's a fucking, that's a decade, yeah. He's saying I ain't even been given a release date. I just know the year I'm going to come out. And then man saying stuff to me like, yeah, I'm going to get my mum to send my bed sheets in so I can get settled in. I'm like, nah, fam. <laughs> yeah, even right then and there. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, nah, fam. I ain't getting settled into prison. Yeah? Like, a man's telling me like, you know, he's got 20 years left on his sentence. Isn't it? Like, what do I even say to that? What do I say? What do I say? You're going to be out soon, don't worry. So these are the things that I, I had to remember. Because to kill someone is not a bad man thing. Yeah? You, you could stab someone in the wrong place. And then they bleed to death. Yeah? Don't think, yeah, you know, it takes you to do some mad stuff. and No, you could die over one stab group. Yeah? You could... A lot of men on the street, yeah, they stab people for the sake of stabbing people, you know, to get stripes and that, yeah. They stab someone and they don't even want to kill them, but they stab them in the wrong place and it's over. Lick one artery and that's it, yeah. Stab someone in the chest just to give them a little poke and you end up going a bit too deep, catch his heart and that's it, it's over. And that's, that's what happened to my men. They were... In a different area, they chase someone down, yeah. I know they didn't really mean to kill the person. But now, two lives are gone. Yeah? The victim, and obviously the person who, who stabbed him. Yeah, his life's over now, and he's a lifer. These are the conversations I remember. Plus... Meeting a lot of man in jail on the wing and that we in for a murder, we in for a murder, we in for a murder. Yeah. So a man, yeah, manslaughter, whatever, innit? Yeah, but they're still riding 10 years, others 30 years. These are the conversations that I had to remember. Yeah. And these are the conversations that came up in my mind and I'm like, yeah. I can't be putting myself in a position where I might be doing this long sentence, that long sentence, wasting my life away. Even when I was in Felton, that's why I got sent to first, when I first got sentenced. I only spent two weeks in there. I met one of the men from school. He was a year above me. 
They say you know yeah, this guy was a bad youth from day. Yeah. They say you know yeah, if you're a head teacher, you got a fucking criminal as a pupil in your school. The youth was 14, 15 years old, dude. Just remember, 14, 15 years old. He got sentenced for kidnap whilst in school. He went to prison whilst in school. He served his time. He came out and went back to school. I've never heard of anyone being in school, going to prison for kidnap, coming out and returning back to school. Just so you know. This individual was a bad individual yeah. from day one, just a straight up criminal. Yeah. Now, I'd love to say his name, but I ain't gonna bet out what man's in trouble for or whatever in it. So I ain't gonna say my guy's name or whatever in it. But this guy, yeah, he was a straight up criminal from day one. What's he in jail for this time? Take a guess. Kidnap. Again. Now don't get it twisted, because everyone thinks kidnap's a certain thing, and it might not always be that. Yeah. Kidnap can be just holding someone against their free will. Yeah. You're not going nowhere. Like you can walk up to someone in the street. You're not going nowhere. Stay here. No, oh, I wanna go. No, you're not going nowhere. If you move, I'm gonna smack you up. That's technically kidnap. Everyone thinks kidnap is grab a man up, yeah. Tie him up, throw him in the back of a boot, drive him to Epping Forest, leave him in the shed and feed him pot noodle for three days. That's not necessarily kidnap. I mean, it could just be holding someone against their free will. So anyway, if it weren't every day, it was every other day. Bam, 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 bam. Man will come to my cell door you know, just to see what I'm on. What are you saying for him? Because yeah, I weren't allowed out like that. I didn't have any privileges. Yeah? I weren't allowed to go education, nothing like that. Because I was in there for such a short period of time. I was only allowed to go to the gym and association social. So he might be going to church or the mosque or going to education or whatever. But I weren't allowed to go to education. And I didn't believe in any religion or nothing like that. So I wouldn't be going out to church or the mosque. I think. So he used to, when he was out, he used to always bang on my door to see if I'm all right or whatever, innit? Now, most of the time when he'd come to my cell door, he'd just be coming to chat shit. But on one particular day, he came to my cell door. Bam, 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 bam! He's explaining to me that he's going to court. And he's going to Old Bailey. Yeah? If you don't know about Old Bailey, that, that's for serious crimes, yeah? Ain't no one who's teething from Woolworths or Tesco's is going to Old Bailey, yeah? Old Bailey is serious crimes. So he said he's going there for sentencing. And he said, basically, wish me luck. And I said, yeah, don't worry, man, you'll be all right, man. You ain't going to get no mad sentence or nothing like that. Just to give a man a bit of hope. Later on that evening, I hear a couple doors open. And I hear a couple doors slam. Next thing you know, I hear a man shout, Johnny! Come, Come to your door, door fam. fam. See, so, yeah. yeah. I went, I went to, to the, the old Bailey, Bailey today. today. And, and I got, got the best, best sentence that, that I could. The, the judge, judge gave, gave me seven, seven years. years. Don't watch that, though. You've already done a year, fam. So you only got two and a half years left. By the time you know it, you'll be back on roll, fam. Like, certain men are dumb. Certain men will watch this. Oh, three and a half years, that's nothing. Three and a half years? Is a long time to spend behind a cell door. You know how productive you could be in three and a half years. Not to mention you could die in prison. Don't get it twisted. Prison's not that bad. But there's a potential that you could get seriously injured. If not murdered. Man heard a story. Yeah? Someone from the other side. Yeah? Someone that... My people, them, yeah, they didn't like, yeah, someone from the other side went to jail. Yeah, ain't got nothing to do with me or none of my people, but this particular character went to jail. He got involved in some little drug dispute or something like that. Remember in prison, yeah, you've got ground floor, first floor, and second floor, yeah. 
cells on each floor. Yeah? A man's got into a dispute over some drug business or whatever, isn't it? It didn't end well. Yeah? Let's just say that. Yeah? The guy's got stabbed in his chest and he must have been on the second floor. Stabbed him in his chest, dashed him over the railing. Yeah? Now, in prison, obviously, you've got multiple floors and that. A fight might break out, yeah? or someone might try and commit suicide. So what they do is they've got a net. Yeah? Anyone that goes over the railing, yeah, they'll be, you know, they'll land on the net. He's been stabbed in his chest and dashed over the railing, and he's landed on the net, and he's bled to death. It took the paramedics or whoever, fire brigade, whoever. It took them forever to get this you off of the net because where he landed, right? He landed in the center of the net, right? So they had to cut the net, right? And it took them forever to get him off this net. Yeah? Imagine, yeah, you're a fucking prisoner, yeah, on the wing, and you're looking through your flap or your cell door, and you're seeing a dead body. Yeah, lifeless corpse on the net, bleeding to death. This is the shit that could happen if you're in prison. Yeah. I know I've said in previous videos, you know, prison's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's like youth club for, for big boys. Yeah. This is why a lot of men re-offend all the time. But there are some times where a man will get murdered in prison over madness. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, yeah, three and a half years is a long time. Yeah. Forget the fact that you could die in prison. Three and a half years is a long time. Yeah, to spend behind a cell door not being productive. Now, obviously, there's courses you can do in that. But I'd rather be doing courses out. I'd rather be doing courses out on the road. So, yeah. It's not worth it. These are the things that people need to think about before they go out and do crime. It's just not worth it. The sentences are not worth it. Me and man doing seven years. Me and man doing 20 years. Man are talking about, man are talking about getting settled into prison. Nah, that it ain't for me. It ain't for me. Yeah. Stay wise.